Good evening, friends. Today again we will read from Matthew 4. Particularly, we will read the verse 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And the question can arise that why God allowed devil to tempt Jesus? Or you could have a bigger question that God, does God ever tempt us? And what about, what about James 1.13? When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. So James says that God does not test and tempt anyone. But here in Matthew 4.4, 4, it says that the Spirit led uh, Jesus into wilderness to be tempted. To understand this, we need to deep dive into this word tempt or temptation and test or trial. It's two separate words is loosely used. Um, we are using it, tempt or temptation and trials or tests interchangeably. But there is a subtle difference. Test always produces a good result. Take a goldsmith. Goldsmith takes the gold and put into fire to burn the impurity so it can become more pure gold. And, and a temptation, the end results of temptation can be very devastating. Because Bible says that devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And how he does that? Bringing temptation. So let us set one thing that God does not tempt person or his children, but God does test his children, which always produces a good results or end results is always productive or better. Now, let us look into the Hebrew word for test. The Hebrew word, there are two Hebrew words for test called Nasha and Masha. Nasha is used 36 times and Masha has been used um, for five times in Old Testament for test. And you remember God tested Abraham. That was not a temptation. God test Abraham. And God does test people to produce more better personality, to equip them to for a better things, to bless them, to refine them. Now the the for a Greek word for test has been used only two times in a in a New Testament. And that is called Dokimion. Dokimion has been used in first, uh, sorry, James 1, 13. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Like I said, at the end of the test, always better things comes out. Here, by testing of your faith produces perseverance. First Peter 1, 7 also says that these have come so that the pro one trials of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise glory and honor when jesus christ is revealed so only two times james 1 3 and first peter 1 and 7 and both time test produces the good results better results however the uh, the Greek word for tempt is pyrazo has been used 39 times in New Testament. 39 times in the New Testament pyrazo has been used. Now let us now now let us look those words uh, Matthew 4 4. 
Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into wilderness to be tempted. That means pairazo by the devil. Again, I said that God, like James 1.13 says, God does not tempt person, but only devil tempts people. Now, why God allowed devil to tempt Jesus in the wilderness? As a contrary, Holy Spirit is leading Jesus to devil in a wilderness to be tempted by devil. Why is that? Because Jesus was God, but he was on earth in a human flesh and he was 100% human also. And when God was in a, Jesus was in a wilderness, that time Holy Spirit was with Jesus Christ. And he defeated devil as a human, not as a, as a divine person, as a God, as a human in the, with the presence of of the Holy Spirit. So God, because we are living in this world, because we are living, we are living with the power of Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is by our side. Jesus wanted to set up an example for you and me that yes, man can overcome temptation with the help of Holy Spirit. That was the reason God allowed our Holy Spirit lead Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted by devil. So let us look at these verses. James 1.13 It says that when tempted, no one should say God is tempting. That means no one should say God is pyrazomi. For God cannot be tempted. Now for here, this tempted word is very beautiful. Uh, it is not pyrazio, it's called espirastos, espirastos. Espirastos, that means it is related to characteristics. Like Jesus is a holy and just, it is his characteristics. That way, Jesus is beyond temptation, he's untemptable. That is why a very special word is used here, espirastos. And he says that God cannot be espirastos by evil. Here, for evil, the Greek word is used called kakos. Kakos means bad nature. That means there is nothing, nothing bad nature in, in God. He is pure. He is perfect in every way, shape, form. He is beyond temptable. And that is why it says, that, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and antis. So let us talk about uh, another verse that you know the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. Let's read uh, uh, Matthew 6.13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. So if you, you got to read this full sentence. If you read half, then it will be misleading. If you just read that, do not lead us through temptation, that means, is God is leading me into temptation? Why God leaves me in a temptation? God knows me. God created me. He knew that I will fail down. He, I will fail in this temptation. Why he is leading me? If you read just the half sentence, but you have to read the full sentence. And here, for temptation in these words, is not pyrazio. There is another word is used called pyrasmos. Py, uh, pyrasmos, the meaning of pyrasmos. So that means, uh, Jesus says, do not lead us into pyrasmos. Pyrasmos means a trial by bodily condition and enticement to sin arising from within or outward circumstances. Let me read the meaning of pyrasmos. A trial by bodily condition, an enticement to sin arising from within or outward circumstances. So Jesus says, do not lead us into a trial by bodily condition, an enticement to sin arising from within or outward circumstances, but deliver us from evil. Now here, the, for this evil, there is new, uh, another word is being used Greek word called poneros. Poneros means full of labor, laborers or hardships. 
So let me read this whole sentence and then we'll try to understand. Jesus says, and do not lead us into a trial by bodily condition and enticement to sin arising from within or outward circumstances, but deliver us from hard labor. So what Jesus is saying, praying, what do you need to pray? Because when Jesus says that we don't have authority, we don't have power, but it says that Matthew, if you read the further uh, Matthew 6, 14, it says that for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory. The sentence ends there. We cannot deliver ourselves. We cannot get, cannot be free by ourselves because thine is the kingdom and power and glory. So Jesus is saying that you should pray this way, that Lord, we are living in this world, but do not give us a courage, give us a strength so we don't fall into situation where out of our, our human weaknesses, we commit sin. And even when we commit sin and we struggle to get rid of those bad habits, Lord, save us from, deliver us from that hard labor. Because why? Because we don't have power. You have a power. Deliver us from hard labor because we will never be achieve the freedom by our own strength. We can get that freedom only because thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory. So friends, couple of things. Jesus was led in wilderness by spirit to be tempted by devil. So you and me also can be tempted by devil and with the with the presence of holy spirit jesus defeated temptation brought by devil so you and me also can overcome temptation by the help of holy spirit god does test people his children because it can produce better things good things but god never tempts his children and we should pray because if we are trapped in our sinful nature in our sin we cannot free ourselves Jesus said to pray that God will help you to not to struggle from hardships because he has a power and he can deliver us not by our strength or effort by his strength his power and his effort. May God bless you and thank you.